So meet the man himself, Bartolome Esteban Murillo, wonderful self-portrait of a proud artist. Look at that. But what really strikes me about this picture is his face. There's something very wise, very compassionate, but also very melancholy about that expression. And he had lived a hard life. His wife died after just 20 years of marriage, having borne him nine children, only four of whom survived. And Murillo, in fact, painted this picture, as the inscription tells us, for his children. And I think his love for his own children, and indeed for the children of Seville, was very much at the centre of his life. Seville, during Murillo's lifetime, was absolutely ravaged by plague, by famine, by crop failure. The population of the city halved, and the streets were full of beggar children, vagabonds. The pictures call attention to the plight of the city's poor children, and they also ask a question. They say, what can we do? Murillo was joined in his quest for the answer by Don Justino de Neve, canon of Seville Cathedral. Wealthy and devout, he founded religious buildings offering sanctuary for the needy. In Murillo, he saw a man who could paint powerful symbols of spiritual salvation. A lifelong friendship and patronage was born. Their most ambitious project was the reconstruction of a local church dedicated to the Universal Mother, the Virgin Mary. So, Xavier, you've turned the central hall of Dulwich Picture Gallery into the nave of a cathedral. What's the thinking behind it? Well, for me, it was highly important to put these pictures back into their original context. And when Murillo was asked to paint these by Justino, they were meant to go right up high in the church of Santa Maria la Blanca. Because normally we see them in the Prado as paintings on the wall of an art gallery, and what you're saying is, no, 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 they're pieces of holy theatre. They should have been up there, that's why we can see the underneath of the guy's foot. Exactly, and suddenly you're appreciating the arches within the composition. He's trying to echo the actual arch of the architecture in his composition. So he's, he's taking everything into consideration. It's a wonderful piece of painting. It is. I mean, it's Murillo at his best. He's just come back from Madrid where he's looked at, you know, Velasquez, Titian, all the great Venetians, and he's really trying out his, his own technique. I can feel him, or sense him, looking at Titian. It's a very Titian-esque dog. I think Venus in one of Titian's That's paintings right, has yeah. got a rather similar dog curled up. It's a great domestic setting. I mean, the Spaniards regard this as la siesta time because they are, have fallen completely asleep. It's a siesta from which they're about to be awoken. The cloud of their dreaming is being parted. Well, of course, and she is basically virgin. instructing them to build a church dedicated to herself. And there she is at the far end. The ultimate image, perhaps, by Murillo of the Virgin Mary. Murillo's immaculate conception of the Virgin Mary is one of his most radiant paintings. But like much of his work, taken at face value, it was derided in recent times. It's precisely the kind of painting that gave him for so long such a bad name. It's been dismissed, this kind of painting. Chocolate box, saccharine, sentimental. But if you clear your mind of those prejudices and see it in the context of Murillo's life, Murillo's Seville, you can see it for the radiant masterpiece that it is. Look at the way the Virgin rises up, this, the rhythms of her drapery. Look at the way she's clothed in the sun, she treads on the crescent moon. And I love this joyful crowd of cherubim and seraphim. I wonder if... Murillo thought of them as cherubim and seraphim, or whether he thought of them as the souls of his own lost children, of the children that he and Justina de Nevi did so much to try and help. I think it's an image of great hope. 
It's a way of telling the people of Seville that despite the darkness, despite the loss, despite all the death, at the end, there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs>